A few weeks ago, I had this company reach out to me and want me to review one of their products that they that they have online. Um, I was actually extremely excited about this. I've seen these for probably four years online, and I've always wanted one. And lucky me, we get to go ahead and open one together. Now, if you're interested in something like this, you can check them out at sterlingkit.com. That's sterlingkit.com. Now, this here is a Toyin made by Toyin Engine, and it is a model FSL400BGC. And it is actually a 14cc four-cylinder water-cooled four-stroke engine kit. Now this model is going to actually run on high-octane gasoline and other engine kits that they sell actually run on nitromethane. So let's go ahead and open this box up and pull all the, uh, all the parts out. It's actually really cool packaging. Everything is really done really nice and neat. These are going to be all your hardware, your nuts and your bolts and your screws. Look at this. This is so beautiful. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Got our little camshaft right here. Now, kits like these, anybody who's curious about engine functionality or somebody who's built an engine before in the past or even if you've never done it or just, you know, a regular hobbyist, these are really good um, for teaching or for just enjoyment purposes. I have assembled a few engines in the past in my life, so this should be pretty simple for me. As time goes on, I'm going to learn throughout this process. I've never built such a small four-cylinder gasoline engine before, but this is going to be really, really cool. So I pull this out. Got our crankshaft, electric start, cylinder sleeves, intake manifold, carburetor, pistons and connecting rods, rocker arms. This is going to be fun. All right, now we get to the good stuff. Here's your engine block. Look at that. Wow, that is gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship there. Beautiful machine work. All right, let's go ahead and set the block down. Come over here. We have our aluminum cylinder head. This is sick. Look at that. Little valves. Wow, look at that. The machine work on this is impeccable. To be such a small engine. I mean, look at this. It's... It's literally the size of my hand. This is going to be fun. There's our little exhaust. That is so neat. All right, so let's go ahead and set this to the side and we'll pull out all the extra goodies that come with it. Now, as far as instructions go, they have QR code here. You can go ahead and uh, you scan the QR code and it'll pull up the, uh, the instructions on how to assemble this. But we're going to save that for later. Now here's an overview of all the parts that are going to be needed to put this engine together. And over here, this is going to be our mounting plate. And so the engine will be mounted on this for testing purposes. And this all comes in the included running kit to get this engine operational. So the only thing not included is a 3S LiPo pack. But it comes with this. This will plug into your lithium battery your starter button and these wires here will go to I believe the uh, starter motor comes with a ignition coil because this is not going to run on nitromethane this is going to run on gasoline high octane gasoline so it needs a ignition coil comes with coolant lines fuel lines coolant reservoir fuel reservoir and it even comes with these baby little spark plugs that is cool that is really cool. Now we have our engine block here. These are your pistons and your connecting rods. These are going to be your cylinder sleeves. And inside, if you see inside the sleeve here, that is your piston ring. So that ring will need to come off and we'll have to pull it out of the sleeve here. And we'll have to clip it around and put it on the groove of the piston. Now, per the instructions, 
if if we labeled this number one and number two, three, and four, so on, the ring that comes out of number one needs to go on this piston, and then this piston needs to go back in to this sleeve here. And this device here is going to be our um, our sleeve. So basically, this will help compress our ring compressor. That's what it's called. Uh, this will be our ring compressor. So basically, the piston, you'll put the ring around the piston, and then you'll slide it through, and it helps to compress the ring to where you can fit it back into the cylinder. Very cool. They've thought of everything. All right, so there's our ring. Need to be very careful not to scar our piston and not to break the ring. It may behoove us to put some assembly oil on this. We want to make sure that the ring, yes, we the ring slides good in the groove. If you had any resistance where we see our little ring gap there, if you were to squeeze this ring gap and the ring gap were to stay closed, then there would be a burr and we would need to clean the burr off of that ring because that ring needs to expand inside of the sleeve in order to seal combustion inside of the engine. Add a little bit more. Now that we have our sleeve and our block and we have our piston inside of our ring compressor, we're going to go ahead and set the two on top of one another and we're just going to press it in. Just like so. Now we have our first piston in our block. Connecting rod at the bottom. Now we just need to repeat the process three more times. Now it's always good, any moving part inside the motor, or in the engine, we're going to take a little bit of oil on the piston wrist pin right there, put a little bit on that side, we're going to put a little bit on that side. You do this to all of them. Cool. All the pistons are in place, got a little bit of assembly grease on each one of the connecting rods. I went ahead and put a little dab of blue Loctite on each one of the uh, cap bolts there. Got a little bit of assembly grease here on the crankshaft. Gonna go ahead and slide it in. All the pistons have been installed, all the sleeves, rings, crankshaft, connecting rods, and end caps, bearings, and seals. Next thing to go is going to be this pulley. Alright, we've got the basically the short block, the rotating assembly, completely ready to go. Now we move on to Now that we got the front assembly all on, now it's time for the cylinder head. These are going to be your head bolts, your head, and your head gasket.
Now it's time for the camshaft. Cylinder heads all on. I slip the cam in. All right, now it's time for the rocker arm assembly. First thing we're going to do is put the lifter buckets on. Valve train assembly is complete. All right, putting on the final touches. Just did the, I guess it's the distributor. So here are all the spark plug wires. Next thing we gotta do is put in the plugs and all the little tiny miscellaneous. These are gonna be the feet. And then we also have to put on the nipples. She's all on the stand. Now it's time for the baby spark plugs. Let's go ahead and pick one of these little babies up. Put it in there. Oh, cool. It's such a tight little fit. Alright, got that one finger tight. Let's go ahead. Put the other three in. Alright, well, we are all completed with the FSL 400, and this thing is an absolute beauty. Take a look at that thing. It's sick looking, man. I'm going to try to run it on gasoline. It's going to be a gas and oil mixture. Even though it is four stroke, it's still going to require oil in with the gasoline. <clears throat> now, I'm going to do something different. The way that these are designed, these are designed to have, um, like just for tabletop running and to run it on the stand, you basically just fill this with water and it circulates in and out via the water pump on the front but because my whole plan for this motor once i actually get it in operation is to actually put this in a boat so what i plan on doing is using this which is a little uh, seven volt water pump pumps water in pumps water out and we're just going to circulate it we're going to do basically keep it in in between here and we're going to use the tank as a source and we're going to use the electric pump and that way it'll constantly circulate water through the block, through the cooling jacket, and then back through the tank. Now, I'm not going to have a radiator because this is going to go in a boat. So it will be pulling water from outside, running it through the motor, and then ejecting it outside. So you'll constantly get a solid you know, state of cool water from outside the boat. That's my plan for long term. For testing purposes, we'll just use the little tank reservoir. But we've got the CDI box here. This is going to have to hook up to the end of the distributor. And we've got Dean's plugs, which none of the batteries that I have currently with me have Dean's plugs. And uh, this requires, I believe, 7.4 volts. Now, the CDI says 6 volts to 15, but everything in the instruction says 7.4. So I'm going to have to get me a two-cell battery just to keep this thing I don't want to burn up any electronics, so that's why I'm not running it in this video. And I'm sure at this point it's getting quite long. So, <clears throat> it has honestly turned out beautiful. I still have to figure out if I have 
these numbered correctly, whether it's 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm not sure, but once I start the process of running it, getting it to run, I'll be able to tell really quickly if I have my wires reversed. I'll go ahead, open that. Yeah, we'll have to adjust the idle direction, say, to keep it 1.5 millimeters open for idle. But yeah, this thing is an absolute gorgeous, gorgeous work of art. Super fun to put together. I will say that. It was absolutely a ball to put together. I really enjoyed it. I've built bigger motors, um, something like this. You don't even, even have to run it, in my opinion. You can assemble it and put it on your shelf, and it looks gorgeous just the way it is. But we're going to actually put this thing to use, so stay tuned for the next video. And uh, I want to say uh, thank you to Toyin for sending this to me to review. And I had a uh, very enjoyable time putting it together. Spent about a week in the evenings putting it all together. Um, doesn't take much. Just need some Allen, Allen wrenches. 5.5 millimeter, 8 millimeter, and you can pretty much put this thing together simply. All you got to do is follow the instructions. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned. Next video, we'll be running this thing.